Good morning everybody, we're just, uh, a few more people are just coming in, so welcome to our St Hugh's virtual service, uh, I hope you can hear me, I'm hoping Alan or Gemma will give me a thumbs up, so my microphone's working properly, brilliant. Um, so while people arrive, uh, can I just encourage you just to be praying? Uh, good morning again. Um, firstly, can I just say Happy New Year to everybody? It's lovely to see you. Mm -hmm. It's Happy New, Year. Happy New Year. We're on the 3rd of January, so by now you've already given up your New Year's resolutions and uh, decided that you are eating chocolate or drinking wine, but um, hopefully by the end of this service we'll come up with some more resolutions, particularly in relation to prayer, because that's going to be our focus for the month. Uh, we're going to do things slightly differently this morning, so we're going to do, um, in a minute we're going to pray together, uh, then we're going to do the notices, uh, rather than do the notices at the end, and then one song of worship, sermon, and then some more worship and some prayer to finish. And then a closing song. So just so that everybody knows the kind of that it will be different this morning. I'd also just encourage you just to use the chat, write as much as you want in the chat, as long as it's positive and encouraging. Or if you've got any questions, put them in the chat as well, please. That'd be great. So we're going to start by hopefully um, sharing a screen that says a New Year's prayer. Um, and we're going to just, uh, I'm just going to say a line and I'd like you to, where you are, uh, just repeat the line back so that we all join in together. So, Lord, you make all things new. Lord, you make all things new. You bring hope alive in our hearts. You bring hope alive in our hearts. And cause our spirits to be born again. And cause our spirits to be born again. Thank you for this new year. Thank you for this new year. For all the potential it holds. For all the potential it holds. Come and kindle in us a mighty flame. Come and kindle in us a mighty flame. So that in our time many will see the wonders of God. So that in our time many will see the wonders of God. And live forever to praise your glorious name. And live forever to praise your glorious name. Amen. 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 So, um, as I said, we're going to start with some notices, having prayed together. So, uh, hopefully, Jennifer and Alan, I'm just asking to unmute because they're going to do the notices. Our new vicar, Martin, suggested that we soak the beginning of the year in prayer so that we have a chance to pray together one way or another every single day of January. Now, I know we're on January the 3rd, but some people have already started. Olwyn has been prayer walking every day. Um, Carolyn has been posting things on the prayer WhatsApp. Um, some other people have been prayer walking. So don't think, oh, crumbs, we've missed the, uh, the beginning of the month. We haven't missed the beginning of the month, but we're going to publish something every week so that you know which prayer activities are organised that you can join in with. But prayer is a multifaceted thing. And there are so many great ways of praying, like worship's a form of prayer and praise and thankfulness and even lament that Stuart talked about. Intercession can be done in a million different ways and believe me, we're going to have a go. And meditation is another form of prayer and that's coming up next week. It's all about communion with God one way or another. He just wants us to spend time with him. So each day there will be something you can participate in. It will be a bit like a banquet of prayer. So here we are on Tuesday on Zoom. Nicola's doing an all age journey of prayer using the Bible. You'll need a pen, a pencil and a paper and it's on Zoom. On Wednesday in church, Roz is leading prayer seeking purity of heart at 10.30 a.m., and on Saturday, I'm going to go out with anybody who wants to take a camera or a phone and we're going to listen to God with a camera and see what images we come up with and then we're going to do something with them. And on Sunday, Stuart's going to do intercessory worship on Zoom at 8 o'clock. Now, you might notice that there are some days that don't have anything, but don't be fooled because every single day 
Carolyn is going to post something on the prayer WhatsApp for those of us that are isolated at home and can't get to anything or who just want to do something quietly by themselves. Every single day, Olwyn's going to be prayer walking. And if you would like to join her, um, talk to her. She can only take one person, but she has a lovely map with prayer points on it that will be on the website. So um, get her map from the website, do her route or do your own route. If you want to pray your bit of the parish, do that and send where you've been praying to me, the roads that you've been on, and I'll compile a map and see if we can complete the whole parish in this month. And then there's a gift tag activity that Stuart and Jackie are organising. Write a prayer on a gift tag and tie it onto the church gates. And let's see if we can completely cover the church gates in prayers. So that's something you can do every day. Next week, there'll be a completely different set of stuff that's organized paul's going to do some christian meditation with us there's a whole load of other things but let's start this week and see how many people can get involved with this thank you alan okay well good morning family um <laughs> covid season has affected us all differently this year uh, for some of us lockdown has meant that we've spent less so financially we're okay but for others it's been a much tougher year. Now, all of us want more money and we've all got bills to pay or we've spent too much at Christmas and we've got a bank balance not as healthy as we would like it to be. This notice isn't about you. That's not the sort of toughness we're talking about. Some people are really, really struggling with all sorts of things causing real hardship. Uh, being unable to pay their electricity bills and uh, not being able to pay funeral costs and things like this. Really seriously struggling. So a number of people have suggested we have a collection. Um, so if you find yourself slightly better off this year, um, consider giving away some of that surplus to those who have had a much tougher time of it recently uh, and, and just share the blessing that God's given you. So please pray about it and send any donations as soon as possible, please, to either Gemma or Marissa. And if you put a label on it for Hardship Fund, then that would sort of help us clarify where it is. So we're just giving people an opportunity to give if they want to thank you can i just uh, add to that that if you're a gift if you're a taxpayer don't forget to gift aid it because obviously that um then the government add more money into that hardship fund in addition to what you've given so please remember if you're a taxpayer to gift aid it because that way it just increases the amount we've got available to support uh, people within the parish and people within the congregation um I was just going to check uh, with other Gemma. Is the Bible study on this Thursday? So yeah. So if you uh, if you regularly attend a Bible study on a Thursday night on Zoom, then that will also be on this week. So please continue with that. And, and where are we with things like the family service and youth activities? Are they back on this week or do they start next week? Just looking for. A um, it's me. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Yeah. Um, wait, and I will be emailing people. Wait and find out. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what schools happens in schools this week, yeah. and then we'll work it out from there. Yeah. 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 Okay. That's great. Um, we're going to uh, worship together in a minute with um, We Three Kings. It's Epiphany today. Um, so we're near the 12th day of Christmas. Um, those of you that followed Jackie on Facebook will see that I managed to upset her yesterday by removing the Christmas tree before the 12th day of Christmas. So perhaps I can <laughs> restore myself with this next rendition of We Three Kings. So let's uh, join together as we worship by singing We Three Kings. We three kings of Orient are Bearing gifts we traverse afar Build and fountain, moor and mountain Following yonder star Oh, star of wonder, star of night Star of royal beauty bright Westward leading, still proceeding, guide us to thy perfect light. Mm -hmm. 
born a king on Bethlehem's plain. God I bring to crown him again. King forever, ceasing never over us all to reign. Oh, star of wonder, star of night, star of royal beauty bright. Westward leading, still proceeding, guide us to thy perfect light. Frankincense to offer have I, incense owns a deity nigh. Prayer and praising, all men raising, worship Him God Most High. O oh, star of wonder, star of night, star of royal beauty bright, westward leading, still proceeding, guide us to Thy perfect light. mine, its bitter perfume, reads a life of gathering blue, sorrowing, sighing, bleeding, dying, still in the stone go to, oh, star of wonder, star of night, star of royal beauty bright, westward leading, still proceeding, guide us to Behold him arise, King and God and sacrifice. Alleluia, Alleluia, heaven to earth replies. Oh, star of wonder, star of night, star with royal beauty bright. Westward leading, still proceeding, guide us to thy perfect light. Perfect life. Father, we just ask that as we uh, listen to Jennifer speak now, that you would just guide us to that perfect life. Help us just to be aware of your presence. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. This is the last of the Christmas and Advent series and I want to talk about the wise men. The first thing I want to say is something that Peter said last week. Emmanuel is the gift of God's presence. And what has that got to do with wise men and a star? Well, lots. Let's look at a little bit of history of God and the gift of his presence. You see, the first place we see it was the Garden of Eden, where God walked with Adam and Eve, and he was very present there. The home of mankind is with God. And the reason we lost it was putting other things before him, our own will in that case. Later down the line, Moses had an argument with God about his presence. You see, the Israelites had been putting other things in his place, and they called it idolatry. And God said that although he still loved them, he couldn't be with them anymore. But as a second option, he would send an angel with them into the promised land instead of going himself. But Moses said, how will anyone know that you were pleased with me and your people unless you go with us? What else will distinguish us from all the other people on the face of the earth? You see, God's presence was what marked them out as his he was with them as a pillar of cloud by day and by a uh, pillar of fire by night. How awesome must that have been? And it was also a responsibility that they had betrayed. Because you see, although that marked them out as his, the other thing was that everybody could see that they were his. 
and how they behaved was important. And then the next time, we, well, there, there are lots of times, but another significant time was in the temple. When Solomon finished dedicating the first temple, fire came down from heaven, consumed the sacrifice, and the glory of the Lord filled the temple. The priest couldn't even go in it because the glory had filled it. And this was called the Shekinah glory, the visible manifestation of God dwelling with his people on earth, the thing that defined them as his. So a bit of history now. Around 700 BC, 10 tribes of Israel were exiled to Assyria. And then in 605 BC, the Babylonians came to exile more, even more of them. Thousands of them, of the remaining tribes, were taken away. And that's when Daniel left Israel. Most of the Jews were in exile from the Promised Land, 900 to 1,000 miles away to the east for a long, long time. Time. In fact, there were probably more Jews outside of Israel than there were inside of Israel. Then the temple was burned in 587 BC, and by the time Ezra came along in 458 BC, when the temple was rebuilt, there were still Jews living in Assyria and Babylon. Not everyone went home. And you'll see a timeline of this and a map on the screen. God's manifest presence was something that had marked out his people as his. But years after Daniel's exile, Ezekiel in 593 to 571 BC witnessed a terrible thing. It was another time of idolatry for the Israelites and Ezekiel saw the glory manifest, the physical manifestation of his presence with them, of God leave the temple. It happened in steps. First it went over the threshold. Then the glory went out through the east gate and towards the Mount of Olives, going away from Jerusalem. The visible manifestation of God's presence left and it went east. Now, when the temple was rebuilt in Ezra's time, there was no mention of God's manifest presence returning. Yet the promise to, had been that the rebuilt temple would be far more glorious than the first. The returned Jews wept because the physical building was a shadow of the original temple. What happened? God had a bigger plan. But do you know what? The next time we hear about God's manifest presence just turning up is when the shepherds were out in the fields. You see, I think the Victorian pictures we have on Christmas cards and in our cultural heritage completely miss the point. Yes, the angels were impressive and a bit of a surprise, but they were just the messengers. They were surrounded by the visible glory of God. The word means the light that emanates from his presence and is associated with his acts of power. It was at this point that the shepherds were afraid. The angels weren't the shiny things here. God was. God's manifest presence was returning and it doesn't stop here. Guess why it was returning? Because Emmanuel was arriving, God with us, the way it's supposed to be. This was God's bigger plan, to be with us himself as a human and make it possible for all people everywhere to be with him. You couldn't have a bigger arrow pointing to something phenomenal happening here. The glory the physical reappearance of God's presence appeared with the announcement of his big rescue plan for all of us in Jesus. You see, when the Shekinah glory first left the temple, it went east. Remember that. There has been a lot of speculation about the star in this story. 
Much of it tries to link with natural phenomena and work out what it could possibly have been from what we ho already have. But I'm going to suggest a theory which can't be proved, but it is just a little bit interesting. You see, the star that the wise men saw was moving. Stars always move. Each night they rise in the east and they set in the west. Always. These men had been watching stars. They were professional star watchers. And they saw a new one. They knew it was a new one because they knew what the other was like. And it was travelling the way stars always do. From the east to the west. Why they followed it, we'll look at it late. We'll look at later. But this star did a couple of unusual things. It changed directions, so it was going east to west as stars normally do. But when it got to Jerusalem, it then went north to south. That's a ninety-degree turn. Stars don't do that, and then it stopped. Stars don't do that either, especially over someone's house. This was no ordinary star. This was not a comet or a meteor shower. They behave differently. It was not two planets coming into alignment like the thing that happened last week. This was very different. Next, the wise men. Guess which direction they came from? They came from the east. They might have travelled for about two years because Herod asked when they had left. Now the average speed of a camel train going through the desert or around the desert and allowing for sandstorms and camels needing two months rest in the middle of the year, etc, etc, going at 10 to 20 miles an hour, or, or 10 to 20 miles a day, anyway, it takes three to eight months to travel 1500 miles like that. These men travelled a huge difference. But they knew the Hebrew scriptures that prophesied that God was sending a ruler whose origins were from eternity. How could men who lived hundreds or even thousands of miles away know that? Now remember I talked about the destruction of the temple and the exile of the Jews? Well, there were hundreds and thousands of descendants of the exiled Jews living about a thousand miles away to the east. One of these exiles had been Daniel. Now Daniel served under four Babylonian rulers and he gained quite a reputation for being an accurate prophet. It all started when one king had a dream that disturbed him and he wanted an interpretation and he wanted it now. He was starting to kill his wise men, who, strangely enough, were called Magi, the only other time that this word appears in the Bible, apart from the wise men who went to see Jesus. And when they didn't give him the right answer, well, he thought they were no longer of use to him. Babylon was not so very different from our culture now. They embraced every kind of spiritual and dodgy way of finding out what they wanted to know with no discernment whatsoever. And the king set up a sort of competition for his magi. Tell me the dream and the interpretation or you will all die. And they failed. Daniel heard about this and asked to be given some time. He sought God and he was the only one to get it right. Then he was instantly made to be chief of all the Magi and he trained them. You see, Daniel was faithful to God and guess what he must have taught them? That if you want to hear what the Lord God has got to say, you have to serve him and him alone. He would have taught the Magi from the scriptures and these were passed on from generation to generation for six hundred years. There was culture among the pagan magi who advised the Babylonian kings that was steeped in Jewish culture and scripture. And there were families of the exiles who were still in Assyria and Babylon. And although it was hundreds of years later, from the inheritance left behind, 
there were still men who were Magi who were waiting. When the star appeared, the men who had learned the ancient scriptures saw it and knew that the time had come. Were they Jews? It's unlikely, as the ones who had stayed behind had liked the pagan culture and didn't value their Jewish heritage enough to go back. They were probably pagans, or so mixed up in their beliefs that the Jews who did go back wouldn't have owned them. But God was active in their hearts. He doesn't respect traditions. He looks for hungry hearts and something in the ancient scriptures had captured them enough for them to be looking. I wonder if the, at the arrival of the human Emmanuel, the glory the shepherds saw and the star that shone and led faithful searchers to find him was none other than the Shekinah glory returning to all of God's people as a sign of his human arrival. We can't know, but it definitely came from the east, which is where it went to when it left. I wonder if this was a great big arrow to what he was doing next in calling all humanity back to be with him, the visible manifest sign of God being with mankind. So why did God choose to show this star to people so far away? These people were prepared to come a very long way to leave all they had and not know if they would ever go home. They took extravagant gifts because they were convinced that this was the ruler who was from all eternity. They came to worship and they did worship. Everything they did was worship. They left, they traveled not knowing what would happen to them. They bowed before a child in worship and they listened to the God that they had been following in their dreams. They were putting him first and trusting his word at great cost. They were living by faith. You see, God's plan all along was that all people worship him and be with him. He wanted a complete human family, not just the Jews. Do you know what, the Jews missed it. They knew the same scriptures they even told the wise men where to find the Messiah, but they didn't go themselves. Why ever not? All Jerusalem knew that the Magi had arrived. They must have seen the star. They heard from the shepherds. But maybe God blinded their eyes because he wanted more. He first announced his arrival to the outcast shepherds, the ones of no account. And then he had already sent the star to Gentile seekers so that they arrived on time. And they are the next people to worship him. He chose to meet those who would not be acceptable, those who were outside the camp, those who are different and believed differently. He wants everyone. Now we shouldn't be surprised if he reveals himself to people who were different to us even to people who believe differently to us. It might be that your Muslim next door neighbour has a dream. Don't reject them. Or that your new age colleague has a vision and it might be all jumbled up with all sorts of rubbish, but it still could be God talking to them. Or it could be someone you don't like because they're different in all sorts of ways and they might even smell bad like the shepherds. They don't have to come to church first or even at all. The wise men didn't. They don't have to be anything. He wants everyone. He is speaking to all sorts of people right now and we need to be ready to welcome them, accept them, listen to them and possibly even learn from them. You see, Holy Spirit talks to people's hearts and teaches them all things. He could be teaching some unexpected people right now. So let's be praying for everyone around us. The wise men worshipped in ways that Jews didn't and God loved them for it and recorded it for all of us to see. So what can we learn from these wise men? You see, if the star was the Shekinah glory, which actually means the living, 
dwelling, visible manifestation of God. If it was the Shekinah glory returning, then God plans in the long term, doesn't he? Because 600 years had passed and he is always perfectly on time. The prophecy of the glory of the second temple being far greater was expressed in Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Not restricted to one place and one people, dwelling within us forever, teaching us all things from the inside heart, inside out, the heart of flesh instead of the heart of stone. It's just amazing. God didn't want another building. He wants hearts. He wants every heart. We are the greater and more glorious temple of the Holy Spirit. I think we need a bigger revelation of this to see what it could look like if it's fully expressed in us. The original people, the original temple took people's breath away. It was so magnific magnificent. Do we? What if we looked like the dwelling place of God? What if people could see who we are as we walk in the park, as we go to work, as we go to the supermarket with our masks on? There are all sorts of stories of this. But that's for all of us. It's something to ask for right now. You see, if pagan astrologers can follow God's word into unknown places, not really knowing where they were going and if they would ever return, if their sole purpose was worship, what have we got to worry about in 2021? Can we not also face the unknown, the year where we don't know what will happen, the uncertain future, knowing nothing other than that we want to worship Jesus, who is still the ruler of and from all eternity. We have so much more than they did. We have Emmanuel all day, every day. We have Holy Spirit with us to teach us all things. Covid isn't a surprise to God. He knows the way through this year. He is with us. He only has good plans for his people, the ones who will love him and honour him with all that they have. All we have to do is trust him and follow him. So let's worship him with all that we have. Cultivate his presence with us both at home and together whatever way we can. And when we get to next Christmas, aim to have experienced Emmanuel in ways we never knew before. Aim to squeeze every bit of being with God out of this year and, and him being with us out of the days to come. And let's see what he will do. Amen. <clears throat> Should we just be still for a minute and just reflect on what Jennifer said? I'd, I'd really encourage you, um, I mean, I'd seen Jennifer's notes, so I've read them before actually watching that sermon, um, and I've still made more notes about things she said, and, and aren't we really blessed that we can go back and watch things on YouTube at the moment, so if you've heard what Jennifer said and there was things in there that you want you kind of missed or you want to hear again then I'd encourage you to go back and watch it again when we post the, the service later on today up on YouTube. I, I've noted three things. Uh, God plans in the long term, not the short term. I mean he plans in the short term as well but he plans in the long term and he's always on time. God wants our hearts and he wants us to trust and to follow him. And as we go through into 2021, for some of us that will be a challenge. But actually it's okay because God's already got plenty of plan for us. Because he's planning in the long term. And he'll be on time. 
we're going to just uh, worship together now and then when we finish worshiping uh, Jack is going to lead us in some prayers so Gemma if you is my desire to honor you Lord with all my heart I worship you all I have Holy name, 
gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Okay. So, first of all, we're going to pray uh, prayers of thanks. Okay, I don't know if you remember, but back in April, um, I preached a sermon and I said, this year, I felt that God was saying to me that this year there would be some real positives, that in amongst all the rubbish, I don't know if you remember the old man draw, in amongst all the old rubbish that was in there, there would be precious things like my Jubilee coin. And I just, as the year ended, God reminded me of that and said, well, look and list those things list those things to to me for me who that have been positive um because there's so much to be negative about isn't there and it's not always easy it's not easy to be positive in in times like this um so i did that and i'm going to get to that in a minute but just firstly i thought it would be good to share something that somebody sent to me yesterday that somebody else sent to them um from a member of our church probably 30 years ago. Bearing in mind, these people have just lost a grandson in the last couple of weeks, uh, a two-year-old. So these people are just broken. And they sent a, sorry, I'm, I'm just thinking about that is making me tearful, but um, they sent a list of things that have happened in 2020 in, the world, um, which kind of have slipped into the background. So I'm just going to read you four of those things. Um, the first one is 
that victim, the number of victims of terrorism has decreased in 2020 for the fifth year in a row. Well, to me, that's pretty, pretty significant. <laughs> And the second thing is that Saudi Arabia and Palestine have now banned child marriage. Another thing that I think is very, very significant and very, very important. The ozone layer has closed over Antarctica. I don't remember hearing about that, but that's what happened last year. And the vaccination against COVID is the fastest developing vaccine that has ever happened. Well, aren't we grateful for that? <laughs> so, um, and I don't want to go into another sermon, but I did just want to list the things for me that, that I am really thankful for this year and that I feel like God has taught me this year. Um, the time, so we were on our own before lockdown, all the children flown the nest and whatever. Uh, Stephen was in Columbia, bank, lockdown, he was home, um, which was, which was great because we love to spend time with him always but normally it's just a quick meal and a chat and a catch up it's not really 24 7 living because not only was he home he had no job um we were ho i was home more because i was only working in school a little while so there was a lot of adjusting to make um but we i am just so thankful for that time that i have spent with we have spent with him um and the well we wouldn't have had that time and the same with Becca, she came back too, and that was just brilliant. Um, the second second thing is that we have been walking more. Um, always loved walking in the countryside. In fact, that's where I pray. Um, much better than sitting in, in, in a room. I will pray when I'm driving, I'll pray when I'm walking outside. And if, if I'm in countryside, that is very enabling for me. So we've done a lot more walking, which has made us a little bit fitter. Probably not fit enough, but... Um, yeah so that's been good and appreciation of the loved ones around us it's only when we can't see them isn't it that we just appreciate them so much more and and we just realize and appreciate all those celebrations that we we take for granted so that's the the last thing for me so, so we're, we're going to open the mics and um, spend a couple of minutes just giving thanks so what are you thankful for you can put it in the chat you can Say it out loud, and, and Gemma, perhaps if you could open the mics and let's just pray together. Is that? For the way that you've uh, blessed us. Lord, for your abiding goodness, Lord, through this year, your faithfulness, love, Lord, your mercy, and you, Lord, retirement that you have given us. Companionship of me, I thank you for sorting out the flat. Thank you for that, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Possible to rebuild an online community. Of uh, uh, worship, you. fellowship, ministry of the word, Lord God. We just thank you, Father. Um, Lord, for we live in an age of the, where the technology is available to do these things. Thank you that you thank kept you, Lord. safe, Lord Jesus. Thank you that you've not got COVID. And we have got COVID. Exile and dispersed into our own. Thank you, Father. Discoveries that have been made this year um, will help to mitigate the impact of the virus and ultimately to protect the human population against it. Father, we just. Uh, Let's see if yeah, it takes another yeah. step in to school up for Jennifer for uh, Gemma for many yeah. others that have stepped in the time. So Father, we just thank you for your plans for us, that you have plans for good, that you're in control, mm. and that you are always on time, whatever happens. Thank you, Jesus. We're now going to move to a, a 
second time of prayer, which is, Jack is just going to talk about prayers of petition. Okay. <clears throat> so it's only when I was reading that that I realised about petitions. And actually, I signed a petition yesterday uh, about schools and uh, about, you know, the government thinking seriously about whether our schools are safe um, to go back to. And when you sign a petition, you don't just sign a petition if you're not really bothered. And it doesn't really, you know, you don't think, oh, I'll just sign that petition. It, it's something that you feel from the heart. Petition comes from pleading and and it's not just something, it's a repetitive thing. It's not just a one-off thing. Um, it's something that you wouldn't just sign a petition and never think about it again. It, it's, it's something that needs to be continuous. So let's do some prayers of petition for anything that that is really on our hearts. We're gonna, we're not, I'm not going to direct you for what you need to pray for. You know what's on your heart. It's going to be different from what's on my heart. And we're just going to do that now. And let's commit ourselves not to just pray now. But let's carry on those prayers of petition um, throughout throughout the day, throughout the week, and throughout the month. Okay. Okay, so Gemma's going to unmute us all. And let's just pray together. Oh, Lord Jesus, we just lift up uh, this lockdown, this whole situation, um, the people that will obey and the people that will not obey. This isolation, Lord Jesus, oh, is very important. We just um, lift up the uh, NHS to you, Lord Jesus. We pray um, that people will follow the rules, Lord Jesus. That we will, uh, that that will be a sign of us being willing to submit to you as well. Lord, I pray that there will be in us kindness and joy. We would, um, so we just pray against. Um, the spread of this disease. Oh. We pray for your uh, goodness to abound in us, Lord Jesus. Um, that we will prefer one another to ourselves. Um, um, your will will be done, Lord Jesus. Their finances. Holy name. About their family. We pray that. Worry for their health, Lord. Yeah. Heavenly. To all those. We pray against the spread of COVID 19. We pray for the decisions that we made for the many things. Please, Lord God, you would be present with them. You are present with them. We pray that you would reveal to them and speak words of reassurance. We pray in every name, Lord Jesus. Pray, Lord God. No, we just got him. Not be shut it down, Lord Jesus. And do our part in that, Lord. We know that's part of it. Pray, those whom we know, and kindness becoming more for that would be right. So, Father, again, we just thank you that you have uh, your plan in the short term and in the long term, that you're always on time. And Lord, we just uh, ask together that you would encourage us to pray and to petition you, to bring our requests before you, not just in the last couple of minutes, but as we go throughout this week, as we go throughout this month, throughout this year. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. And finally, we come to uh, prayers for peace. Um, and Jack could just talk a bit more about what we're going to do in terms yeah. of prayers for peace. Okay, so it says the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. It's a guard. The peace of God is a guard. It protects. Um, and interestingly, it doesn't just guard our hearts, it guards our minds. And I don't know about you, but my mind is very powerful. And um, there, are ha there are numerous occasions when I have to overrule my mind and, rem and remind it with scripture that, that I'm not supposed to be anxious. I'm, I'm actually supposed to let everything go. It's not easy, <laughs> but my mind is very powerful and I, and I trust that yours is too. So let's, let's let the peace of God transcend us. Let's pray for things that we know we're going to struggle with the next week, the next day, the next month. Um, what do we need in our lives? What, what do we need at work? What do we need at home? 
to get through. January and February are always bad for me. I'm, I'm a kind of summer girl. I love the sun. I love the light. Um, and I am conscious of that. And I used to think that was a bad thing that I was conscious of it. But I, I think it's actually a good thing. I think it's because because I know now that I have to put things in place to combat that. I have to pray harder. I have to do things that are going to lift my spirit. So let's pray for things that we know that that we need and um, that will bring us peace. OK, so let's open the mics and, and we're praying for ourselves. What things do we need with? God, we need God to just come and bring us peace or to change our hearts or our minds. Give us peace. Oh Lord Jesus, I need family and I need purpose. I pray that um, my soul is my condition and um, stay peace to rest, Lord. And um, I can God that you make up and pray Lord that you make up um, our community. Lord, you make our church, our church family, a place of peace. So we ask Lord for your pervasive. Yes. All pervasive peace, Lord God. We pray, Lord, um, peace in the resolve um, conflict, Lord, in relationships. Pray, Lord God, thank you, Lord, for Lord, that you would help us to seek the way of peace in all our conversations, Lord God. Peace, Lord God. Teach them. Um, to be bearers of peace, um, that, um, peacemakers, um, carry peace into our family, wherever we go. Heavenly Father, may your peace um, dwell in our hearts, guard our hearts from all assaults of the enemy. Pray for peace with our sons. The Lord, we just uh, thank you that you promise that the peace of God would come and be with us, that you promise not an absence of uh, trouble or of conflict or of, of difficulty in our life, but that in the midst of all of those things that you would give us your peace. Mm. So Lord, we just really ask that you would guard our hearts and our minds this week as we go through this week with your peace and your presence. Thank you, Lord, that Jennifer reminded us that you want our hearts mm. and that we're greater and, and a more glorious temple of the Holy Spirit. So thank you for that, Lord. Mm. Lord, would you just uh, continue to guard our hearts and our minds with your peace. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We've got um, just a, one more thing to do and then one more uh, song just to finish with so um we're at the start of a, a year and and traditionally I, I said at the beginning of the, the service we we often make resolutions um at the start of a new year um and often we resolve to to be fitter to to walk more to exercise more perhaps to to pray more um to eat less chocolate to drink less alcohol you know have a, a dry January that kind of thing um, but God wants more than that and um, so often in churches we start with what they call a covenant prayer covenant is a promise um, it's where we offer ourselves afresh to God and, and resolve to to follow him so we're gonna um, I'm just gonna say the words that are not in bold and then together we're gonna pray the the part in bold it, it goes over two slides it's where we offer ourselves afresh to God. Um, just before we read it, be very clear that when we read it and when you say it, there are words in here and we're making promises that are uh, challenging. I'm no longer my own, but yours. Your will, not mine, be done in all things. We're trying to place ourselves in a place where God is in control. We're saying whatever you bring whether that's 
a bit like the wedding service in sickness and in health for better for worse uh, where we commit to each other when we get when we marry somebody actually in a sense that's what we're doing with this prayer so let's just pause for a minute and then I'll say the words um, that are not in bold and then I just ask you just to join in with me with the words that are in bold so eternal God in your faithful and enduring love you call us to share in your gracious covenant in Jesus Christ. In obedience, we hear and accept your commands. In love, we seek to do your perfect will. With joy, we offer ourselves anew to you. We are no longer our own, but yours. And let's say together in our our homes and, and around this parish as a and we're committing to do this as a church as we pray this together I, I am, am no longer, longer my own, own but yours your, your will, will not mine be done, done in all things, things. Wherever, wherever you may place me in all that I do and in all that I may endure where there, there is work, work for me and when, when there is none when I am troubled and when I'm at peace, your will be done. When I am valued and when I am disregarded, when I find fulfillment and when it is lacking, when I have all things and when I have nothing, I willingly offer all that I have and am to serve you as and where you choose. Glorious and blessed God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you are mine, and I am yours. May it be so forever. Let this covenant now made on earth be fulfilled in heaven. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. So we're just going to uh, finish with one song together, um, and then we'll pray, and then we'll go into our breakout groups. So let's just... Uh, Continue in our worship. Oh, to Jesus I surrender. Oh, to Him I I will ever love and trust Him in His presence daily live. I surrender all, I surrender all, all to Thee. Oh, to Thee, my 
Savior, I surrender all. All to Jesus, I surrender. Lord, I give myself to Thee. Fill me with Thy love and power. Let Thy blessing fall on me. I surrender. Surrender all, all to Thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender all, all to Jesus. I surrender all to Him. I pray. I will ever love and trust Him in His presence daily. Live. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to Thee. Blessed Savior, I surrender all. Yes, I surrender all. I surrender all. All to Thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender all, all to Thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender all. Father, as we go through this week, we... Uh... We ask that you'd lead us. We just surrender to you today. We ask that you'd help us to keep surrendering to you each day. And Father, we ask now that you would bless us and keep us, that you'd make your face shine upon each one of us, that you'd be gracious to us, that you'd fill us with your Holy Spirit and you'd give us your peace. We ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Mm. I mean, hopefully you can um, stay for breakout groups. So you've got a couple of minutes to go and get yourself a coffee. Um, please pray during the week. Um, look for opportunities to pray. If you've got a, a way that we haven't thought of or it's not been suggested and you'd like to lead something or do something, then, then let somebody know. Either email the office at St Hughes or, or let Jennifer know. Uh, it would be great if every day we were doing something and praying for our parish, our community, our family and our friends. Thank you all. Now go and get yourself a coffee and I'll see you in a breakout room in a minute. Bye. <laughs>